Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on my channel. I'm holding a tiny microphone as you can see in my hands. I actually bought this little mini clip-on mic just for when I'm traveling and out and about. Basically, if I'm being completely honest, I got this so I could film me talking in bookshops and when we go bookshopping together and do things out and about and traveling, you can actually hear the audio and I can take my camera instead of my GoPro. We're trialing it today in this video because I don't know, I'm still, I'm still learning how to use it, but this video requires me needing to be close to a microphone, but the camera to be far away. And if you've clicked on this video, then you know that we are going to be doing a tour of my bookcase and all the books on my TBR. This is like one of my number one most requested videos to do over on my book talk. If you aren't following me on my book talk at what Emmy reads, my bookstagram at what Emmy reads, or my personal main Instagram, Emmy Rosam, then come and follow me. It's a fun time over there. I post pretty much daily over on my book talk, lots of book fun things. We're getting away from the point of this video here right now anyways, but all that to say, make sure you're subscribed here at least on YouTube. That's all I ask of you. If you're watching this video and you enjoy it, click the subscribe button. We do a lot of fun book stuff here. But I am standing in a different corner of my office. This is my home office, but it's also my home library. So I thought I'll just give you a little tour of the whole thing because why not? This is my home library. This is where I spend most of my time. I don't actually read in here as much as I should do and I need to make more use of it. But this is my reading room and it's also my home office. As I've said for like 10 times already now, I work from home. So I spend all my time in here working and making reading content. So this over here is the door to my office, obviously. You walk in and I have my bookcases all along this wall here. And then in the corner here, I have my couch. Then from the couch, I have my desk. It is a standing desk and I do want to get a walking pad so I can walk while I work, but also while I'm reading at the weekends. That's on my like list of stuff that I want to get this year because when you spend as much time as I do reading, I kind of want to just get my steps in. So why not read while I walk? Anyways, to the left of my desk, I have my mirror and a plant. Then my wardrobe. So this is where all mine and Cammy's clothes live because we don't have built-in wardrobes in our bedroom. They're in this second spare room. So we share the wardrobes each. And then I just have a little vanity here with like my get ready stuff. So this room, as you'll see, has many purposes, but the most important part is obviously the library behind me. It's what you're all here for, yeah. So this is my home library. I have three Billy bookcases from Ikea. We have two of the smaller sizes and then one of the bigger ones. If you watched any of my older reading vlogs or saw my reading content, I started out with just one of these Billy bookcases. And then as time went on, I expanded onto the other two. I thought this little one would last me a lot longer than it did because I only picked up my first book of the year in February and at that time I owned five books total. My collection over the last five months has grown to this. It is a lot of books. I don't even want to think about the amount of money that has gone into this. But arguably the most important part of this room is Cooper's bed, which is next to the books. Cooper, do you have anything to say to the people? Thank you for your contribution. I don't have a TBR cart. My TBR just sits on my shelves right now because obviously my book collection is growing and I have the shelf space. So there's no need for me to buy a TBR cart just to put my TBR books on it. I also don't have that many TBR books. Like I have a lot, but compared to how much I read, it's not that much. So my shelves are split. I have contemporary romance here, fantasy, and then again, fantasy. So we'll start on this side and make our way over. Now, I like to keep authors that I have a lot of books of together, as well as sort of genre or type of books. So at the top here, we have my YA fantasy books, and these are sort of my younger YA fantasy books. So we have Heartless by Marissa Meyer, Sorcery of Thorns, the Twin Crowns trilogy, the Caraval trilogy here. Obviously, Stephanie Garber wrote Caraval, and I have my Once Upon a Broken Heart books below, which are also by Stephanie Garber and the spin-off series. So I feel like very soon, maybe in the next month or two, I'm gonna have to redo my bookshelves when I go book shopping next and have read all the books on my TBR. And my Stephanie Garber will probably end up all on one shelf, but I just love how pretty the books are and how they look. I don't know, I do need to redecorate and reorganize and will do in the future. Why am I filming a book tour video now if it's gonna change? Because we don't know when it's gonna change, so may as well document what I have now. I live in the UK, 
So all the books that I have and the book covers are UK editions. That's another question I get asked a lot is why my book covers look different or where did I get them from? They're different to the US ones because I live in the UK. I have the UK paperback covers of Once Upon a Broken Heart and the Waterstones exclusive special edition version of A Curse for True Love. Then underneath, I like to keep my fantasy hardcovers here. I don't have any hardcovers in the middle shelf. They're all on the ends. So these are my fantasy hardcovers that I've read and they're sort of organized by color, to be honest. Not intentionally, that's just how it happened. As I said, this shelf was all the books that I had read, but then I filled it and ran out of room, so I split it because I've read Bonded by Thorns and Woven by Gold, but I've not read the third book yet in the series, and I like to keep books together. Even with my TBR, I don't like keeping them separate, I like them all to be together because I don't have that many books where I can't keep track of what I have and haven't read. Obviously, I've got A Fake Inked and Blood, The Letters of Enchantment Duology, which is Divine Rivals, Feybound, Crimson Moth, Fourth Wing and Iron Flame books. I have pre-ordered Onyx Storm and I did get my hands on the Waterstones exclusive Sprayed Edges edition, which I'm very excited about. And I really, guys, am praying that it's so much better than Iron Flame because I personally loved Fourth Wing, but I didn't like Iron Flame. So, unsure, but this space here is basically for that. I have Throne of the Fallen and I have pre-ordered Throne of Secrets. That will be added there. Lore of the Wilds I haven't read and then the Ministry of Time. They're my standard edition hardcovers that I have. Below that on the shelf below we have my Jennifer L. Armentrout books. So I have all my Blood and Ash books except for book 5.5 which I don't have a physical copy of and I don't think I will get a physical copy of. And then I have my Flesh and Fire books that are also paperback. But the way these paperbacks are, they're sort of like a textbook. I've talked about it in my reading vlogs, but they're like bigger than a normal paperback size. They're similar size to a hardcover and they're really floppy and they're my favorite books to read. I don't know why, I just love how they're printed. It's got like a soft matte cover. But then I also have my Fall of Wrath and Ruin, which is another book series that Jennifer L. Armentrout has written, but only one book is out so far. And I believe that is a prequel series, or not even prequel series, it's set in the same world thousands of years before. So technically the chronological order of this shelf should be Fall of Wrath and Ruin, Flesh and Fire series, then Blood and Ash. But the publishing and like reading order is Blood and Ash, flesh and fire and then question mark when it comes to full of wrath and ruin. I've had a few messages lately asking if you should read because I made a blood and ash reading order on booktok and people are asking about fall of ruin and wrath and I don't think that you need to read blood and ash or flesh and fire before reading that like you can read that as a standalone yet yeah, set in the same sort of world but at this moment in time there's only one book out and it's not heavily connected I don't know if it's going to be or what Jennifer has in mind but I just have them organized by blood and ash flesh and fire and then the hardcover and as you can see the hardcover isn't that much taller than the books and then the last shelf at the bottom the billy we have my tall paperbacks so these are paperbacks that are arcs sent to me by publishers or indie authors um, or books that I have ordered that have come at a completely different size to like a standard paperback. I like my bookshelf to look cohesive or at least as cohesive as possible. So when I have taller size paperbacks on the middle shelf, it just looks a bit weird. So it's basically my indie shelf slash taller paperbacks. Then we have the main event, the main shelves. The first two shelves are my Sarah J Maas shelves. So I have Throne of Glass up here, I have Akatar, and then I have Crescent City. I have collector's editions for both Akatar and Throne of Glass. They're just the ones from Waterstones. You can get them on Amazon, but I'm pretty sure they also sell them at Barnes and Nobles in America because Waterstones is owned by Barnes and Nobles. They're the same parent company. It's a fun fact, the more you know. My paperbacks I got in a box set because it was cheaper, like significantly cheaper. So I store them in the boxes and you know, my spines, you can feel that they've been worn and loved and read. They did fit back. I shoved them back into the box after I finished reading them. This is the only thing that's not Sarah J Maas on the shelf and it is the Hunger Games trilogy because I don't know where else to put the books. I don't feel like they belong on the bottom, which we'll, you'll see we'll get to, but I didn't know where to put them. So for now they're up there and they're keeping my TBR jar warm. <laughs> 
Akatar. There's this whole debate of how you should organize your books on your shelves. I personally, when I'm lying books like this, I like the first book at the top and the last one on the bottom because I go to pick the first book up to read it, if that makes sense. Don't try and get me to lie them another way, I'm not going to. A Court of Thorns and Roses and then Crescent City here. Then we have my favorite fantasy books after those below. So we have Lightlark and Nightbane. I like to face them more forward because I just think the covers are so beautiful. We have Powerless, Powerful and Reckless. Then we have the Gods and Monsters series. There's only three books out so far. I read them on Kindle Unlimited and ran to buy physical copies of the books because I love the series so much and I will be rereading them before book four comes out eventually. But there will be seven in that series. Then I have my special edition version of Shatter Me from Waterstones again and it's got sprayed edges. And then I have all my Shatter Me books and the novellas here. When I run out of space on this shelf, the Shatter Me series will probably get moved down, but I don't know how to do it. Then, this is my fantasy red section. So we've got The Plated Prisoner, and I've read all of those. We have the Shepherd King duology, Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy, Dawn of Onyx, Belladonna, and the Foxglove King. One of my books just fell over. These books here are my priority TBR. At the time of filming this, I haven't finished reading these books. These are the books that I'm prioritizing reading or really want to read next. Also, they just look pretty on the shelf. This is sort of where my TBR starts. So then when we go to the layer below, this shelf here is my TBR, like my actual TBR. So I've not read any of the books on this shelf. In my TBR, we have, so Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I have the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox, which are the first two books in that series. I think it's a trilogy. We've got A Study in Drowning, Fire and Blood, by George R. R. Martin, which is what the House of the Dragon is like based off of. The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. The Light That Blinds Us by Andy Darcy Theo. We Hunt the Flame, City of Bones, Vicious, Red Rising, These Violent Delights, Threadneedle, This Woven Kingdom, Bone Season, and then the Dance of Thieves duology. And then on like the TBR shelf, my little TBR bit here, I've got The Serpent and Dove, The Scarlet Veil, Bride of the Shadow King, A River Enchanted. And then out with that, there's only like a couple of the books I haven't read that are on my romance shelf, but I don't count them in my actual TBR because they're just romance books that I mood read and I'm already making my way through them. And then on the bottom here, I have Verity because that's my sister's book. She gave it to me and she asked me to read it and I haven't read it yet and I need to give it back to her. So you'll probably never see me read a coho book or buy one, to be honest, it's not my kind of thing, but I do have that book and I might read it before I give it back to her because it looks quite short and easy to read. Also because I promised my sister that I would. But then we have the whole Twilight Saga. So I've got Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, and then Midnight Sun, which is Twilight, but in the perspective of Edward, like the most recent release. I think it came out in like 2020. Then I have The Winter Garden and Red Queen because I don't have room on the shelf for them. They don't really have a home or know where to go and I think I'm just gonna put the rest of the books that I don't know how to organize yet just down here. And then that leaves us with my contemporary romance shelf. So at the top here right now, it's my Elsie Silver shelf. So I have the Chestnut Spring series and the Rose Hill series. There's only one book out but Wild Eyes book two is coming and then I'll probably organize them like, like that. I still keep it my Elsie Silver shelf. I do just love the pink cover though, so I like it facing out. These are the shelves that are the most strategically styled to look bigger than they are because I don't have that many contemporary romance books, but I do have more books coming tomorrow. Ordered after finishing my reading seven romance books in seven days, more books. I have all three from Abby Jimenez's Part of Your World Interconnected Standalone series to come as well as all of the Magnolia Parks books that I don't have yet because I have been reading them on Kindle and in paperback with the first book, but I had to order them from different places because Amazon was trying to tell me that one of the Magnolia Parks books was selling for 41 pounds. So my Waterstones orders have been dispatched in different parcels. This will be my Jessa Hastings Magnolia Park shelf. I don't know if I'll merge some of my shelves together when the books come. I might have a little play around, but at this current moment in time, this is my Jessa Hastings shelf because I think the book covers are so pretty. I didn't get my hands on the like original 
covers and I actually preferred the original covers to the new covers but I bought this book when I was in London I thought it was very fitting and that was the only cover version they had in the shop so I thought I'm just gonna stick with the new covers then on this shelf here we have all my Taylor Jenkins Reid books I actually read most of these last year she was my go-to author that I would pick up for if I was going on a holiday and needed a book to read I'd read her, her books so I have her books stacked there and then we have my Emily Henry books my Ali Hazelwood books and my Lynn Painter book singular because I need to buy some more and then on the shelf below is my other romance books so I have my Christina Lauren Love and Other Words Abby Jimenez and Lauren Lane so when my Abby Jimenez books come tomorrow they'll be added to this little shelf here but I have my fairy loot books here I have more that I need to unbox I just need to fill my boxings for them first before I can add them to the shelf but this is where I kind of want to like redo my shelves a little bit or organize them that will also be in a bookish vlog by the way when I do that I have the sprayed edges facing out because they are just so pretty and colorful and I love the way they look but they are the June romanticy adult and young adult books for fairy loot and then on the last shelf here I have the knock em out trilogy I haven't actually read these books I got them for Christmas last year before I knew what books I liked I just ha randomly had them on my Amazon wish list, but I did try to pick up book one in January of this year and I put it down like twice because it just wasn't what I wanted to read at the time. So I am going to be reading these and we'll probably do it in a reading vlog sometime, but in the fall because I feel like cozy small town romance vibes. It'll be perfect to read it then. And next to it is sort of more coffee table books that I've had over the years or collected. They're more styled. I've read them all, but you know, they're they're not fiction. They're pretty much there for decoration at this point. And on the top of my bookcase, I just have like my handbags. They're mainly guest bags because that's my favorite brand. I don't own too many clothing or fashion pieces. I like everything to be quite minimal. I clear out and do spring cleanings all the time. And I actually do the same for my books. So what I do every couple months is my least favorite reads or reads that I think that I won't pick up again or reread or loan out to people will get put on the bottom shelf and then after a few months I will go through that pile and then sell or donate books because I want my bookshelf to be books that I'm just absolutely obsessed with in love with my favorites the best of the best I do want a home library and obviously getting rid of books that I have read slows down the process to actually having a home library but just in terms of waste and over consumerism and need. I don't need to have thousands of books on my shelf. I just want the books that I love and will reread and do reread. But also I make book content so I need physical copies of books to hold up and film with and read. So there are a few books on this shelf that I'll probably donate soon like Feybound and The Winter Garden. I know I'll be getting rid of those but that way you know that everything that is on my bookshelf I absolutely love and adore and I read a split mix between Kindle and physical copies for this reason. If I read around 20 to 30 books a month, how many books a year is that gonna be, you know? Like I don't physically have space for all of those books and I don't have a need for that many books. So I always like to read Kindle Unlimited books, that's my preference for Kindle, but anything that's like a lot cheaper or I don't think I'll love and want a physical copy of, I'll read it on my Kindle. But if I'm reading a Kindle book and I'm loving it, for example, The Book of Asriel, which is a Kindle Unlimited series, I fell in love with it so much and then I went and ordered all the books because I wanted to have them in physical copies and read the physical copies of them. So that's sort of my thought process when it comes to the books on my shelf and my bookcase. I feel like book reading and book collecting are two sort of different hobbies that go together. I love special editions and limited editions of my favorite books and I love to collect them and have them on my shelf. And I also just love to read. That is my home library. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You've seen all the books on my TBR now, know what I haven't read or have yet to read. And I'm sure this little library of mine will continue to grow and evolve over time. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure you're subscribed, especially if you've watched a few of my videos by now and you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.